Mike, do you have to, with back-to-back -back games for the first time this season, have to maybe guard against taking that maybe a little bit for, for it, uh, you know, taking it for granted? or do you Help me out here. Back-to-back -back games here for the first time this season, back-to-back -back home. Home games. You guys have not had to travel. I mean, you've been traveling so much yep. home in a way. You finally get to stay at home for back-to-back -back weeks. I don't it, think we should take anything for granted just as a general rule. So, um, again, excited about the preparation, excited about the opportunity to be in the division, um, you know, and, and it, an opportunity to get a get another win, you know, try to try to get back-to-back -back wins. That's probably more important than whether we travel or, or at home. I'm happy, I guess, how run defense was first time against them. Obviously, is that one of the keys yeah, this week? I, I mean, what I think we need to look at is just the – you know, anytime you have a 60 yarder or whatever it was, you know, there's that's gonna that's gonna affect the overall um, you know run defense. I wouldn't say that it was all bad. There's a lot of you know no gains. There's some ones and there's some twos, and then there's some you know there's some some loose ones. And certainly the the X play there on short yardage was was one of those, and it was a big one. So again, we know that this team is an excellent. Um, Again, they're really good up front. I think they uh, they play well together. I think they work well in combination, um, good scheme, and and they they they're effective running the football. And so we'll have to um, we'll have to be really good. We'll have to you know be able to to defend you know some of those shots that we got last time, and you know and make sure that the quarterback is is not creating loose plays. Jaleel didn't actually didn't exactly say go Titans on his way out the door. What kind of conversation do you have with him as he comes back? Well, we had a conversation, and obviously Jaleel, um, I would say that that's out of character for Jaleel. I've enjoyed um, the time that you know he was here, um, getting to know him through through the off season and camp, and um, his professionalism. And, and obviously, he was frustrated. I think we all um, at times get frustrated, and you know that's how he chose to. You know, let that emotion out. It's probably not the way that we would recommend it, and he knows that. And but again, we we all get frustrated at times, and I don't think anybody's uh, immune to that. So, you know, I I, I know who Jaleel is, and and I'm comfortable that uh, he'll give us everything that he has. For you, when you get frustrated, do you have like a particular person you go to as an outlet, or, or what do you do to kind of relieve that frustration? Um. You know, I think family helps. I think, you know, the coaches help. I think players help. I think, you know, the people that, you know, are in this building, you know, help. I think, um, you know, that's always something, you know, when you know, having relationships, I think, are critical just for, you know, the ability to, to talk through. And, um, you know, there, there's, you know, plenty of people here and family. Beyond the morning. Beyond the morning being behind the sticks, which I think you were only twice on Sunday, what are some of the things that you have to do better to convert more third downs uh, in those situations? Not, not have three penalties. You know, uh, that went from third and three to eight, seven to twelve, and whatever. Add five to whatever the other one was. Um, you know, we got to you know got to protect. You know, I mean, you're getting games, you get pressure. Um, you know, expect man till it's not. These are all the things that we tell the players, um, you know, that we try to coach and understand that you get multiple fronts, you get multiple pressures. You know, communication when pressure comes is critical. The quarterback has to be able to, you know, ID the, the front, the pressure. And then, you know, if they give us something else, then we got to know we're hot. And, you know, then we got to protect and, and get open and execute. You've talked a lot lately about. Uh cool plays that either you've executed or that that you failed to execute because of mistakes but you've used cool a lot to describe stuff that you've done or or tried to do what what makes for a cool play um, well i mean i guess i just felt like plays that haven't been banked reps from the off season that you put in it's part of the base um you know your base package from the spring throughout training camp that you're coming in here every day, working against, uh, working towards. Um, 
You know, and you work on those, and sometimes they sit there for a week or so, and sometimes you use them, sometimes you don't. Um, and, again, there's a good balance on those because sometimes it's, you know, an X play or sometimes it's second and 18 or you turn it over. So typically something you're drawing up on a Tuesday collectively? Uh, we've got a catalog. Yeah, I mean, we've got a catalog that we try to – pull from or sometimes they come up on a Tuesday or you know again you can't have a whole entire playbook of them but just things that you know we're, we're trying to use that that can help us how are they different maybe from the team you saw in week five um I mean Stewart's not in there you know Leonard's not in there um I've had some corners you know rotate their way through there but um, Buckner's there, you know, Franklin's there. Those are really um, two impactful players, good good edge rushers. You know, they just keep throwing edge rushers at you uh, one after another. Um, you know, Taylor and Moss are, are, you know, they're figuring out that connection, um, you know, or that rotation, however they want, you know, two excellent backs. Um, but, I mean, really, it's, it's been kind of what they are. Their defense is, you know, they do what they do. Uh, they're fast. Uh, they're, they're aggressive. And uh, they understand their scheme. You know, Kenny Moore, great, great player, just knows how to work in their scheme and you know, won the Panthers game for them. How valuable was it to have a full week to prepare for Minshew this time around as opposed to kind of having to adjust mid-game? Well, we haven't had a full week, but, yeah, we will. Um, Again, he's got great grasp of the system, having been, you know, with that in, in Philadelphia. You know, he understands the relief throws, the RPO game, you know, really well. That's something that they they used last week um, a lot more. They they had it, um, you know. So I think the command is is there, and his ability to extend plays, and you know, he's done a good job for him. <coughs> The way their red zone offense has improved so much since the last time you faced them, and it, what are some of the things that, that you see? Well, that some of those scheme play? plays that you get looks like they go fast. There's some tempo to it, um, you know, given the quarterback options, right? Whether he's you know given it, um, throwing it, or you know, if you overplay that, then he he ran one in last week. So, you know, there's some option um, elements to it down there. You know, they, they cover you up and, you know, like they did against us, they just kind of pushed and there wasn't any penetration and the back kind of scored it through. So, you know, we'll have to be, you know, excellent there, um, you know, if they, if they get down there. Like a lot of players talk about things being, uh, things being simplified a little this last week or at least, you know, the message being to keep things simple. I'm, I'm curious about that. And, you know, when a team's losing, is there a tendency among players to get in their heads a little bit? And, uh, well, again, you know, um, you, you, I don't know if that's players, you know, coaches, people, you know, whatever. You have to stay consistent. You have to try to stay um, as consistent to what you believe is, is possible and know that, you know, the rewards will come, the results will come. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of great examples in there. Again, just a few examples like we touched on that um, – you know, limited it to, to 17 points offensively, but, you know, some great examples in the kicking game, but again, some missed opportunities in the kicking game as well. Um, some great snaps defensively, but then also you know, some penalties or third down conversion. So I don't think that you let any sort of doubt creep in. You just try to, um, you know, stay consistent, you know, these guys to, to understand what they're doing know what to do, play fast and aggressive, play together, um, play with some speed, some violence, and, you know, offensively, you know, try to limit the uh, unforced errors. Mac and, mac and cheese with a hit. Do you find something like that in, in the little spare time you have when you're screwing around, flipping around your phone like the rest of us? Or does somebody feed you clips that might be useful? We find them different places. I thought it was funny. thought it applied to where we were, uh, thought it applied to Thanksgiving, kind of fit good on a Friday tape, good, good way to start, you know, different ways to deliver the message and 
You know, there's a lot of truth in some of that. You know, there's a lot of truth in, in, in humor, and certainly, you know, I, we, I don't even know her name. We're just calling her Aunt Betty for whatever you know it's worth. But, you know, just don't do your own crap. Are you surprised sometimes as to what's sticky with the guys and, and what isn't? Well, we're always trying anything? to engage. We're always trying to make sure that everybody's engaged. Um, we're trying to, um, you know, stimulate learning, stimulate understanding of concepts. You know, that's most important. Uh, and again, if you can have some fun along the way, like this is, you know, spent a lot of time together. So you want to try to make it as enjoyable as possible, uh, not make it giggly and not make it goofy. Um, hold people accountable, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. But then, you know, trying to have a, as good of a time as, as you possibly can. Have you ever had one you thought was good that? Oh, I've got a lot of clunkers, trust me, I'm sure, yeah. When I have to say that's a joke, you can laugh. That's usually a clunker. Was, was Sunday Go ahead, Kayla. Going back to the right back situation, Jonathan Taylor with the thumb surgery, he's going to be out. So with Zach Moss kind of being able to focus on him? Oh, he should be licking his chops after the game he had against us last time. I mean, what, that's the I know. The key. I, he's good back. That's, uh, you know. It's a great example of players that give an opportunity, you know, doing, you know, some great things. And he was, he had, you know, his workload increased and uh, he took advantage of his opportunity and now he'll, you know, obviously probably get more opportunities. Indy lost their starting quarterback <coughs> early in the year and yet they're still in the top 10 in points per game. What is it about their offensive scheme that makes it challenging to slow down? Well, I, I could call it scheme. I think they're really good up front. I think they're. They, they know who they are. Um, they've, they've put different players in there. Um, they cover you up. And they don't give up a whole lot of penetration, not a whole lot of negative plays uh, from them. Um, you know, the scheme is, you know, there's motions, um, you know, relief throws. You know, so, you know, Pittman's been a reliable uh, target. You know, they kind of play a bunch of tight ends and they run the football. When it, comes to execution, when it comes to execution, right, if you guys throughout the week, you go over, okay, if he does this, you have to do that, and you just repeatedly go over and then you get on the field and it doesn't happen, how do you handle the accountability aspect of it? Uh, like, is that something where you'll go yeah. to the coach and go, hey, what's going on? You go to the player, how do you? Well, I mean, I think we all we have conversations with, with all those different people. And... You know, it was it. Is it a mistake? Did you just get beat? Were you loafing? You know, was it an aggressive penalty? You know, what I mean, if you could maybe give me an example, I could try to help you specifically work through that. There's just a lot of different things that come up, you know, or positively at the end of half. Like we've been repping down, down clock uh, since the beginning of training camp, and for our, us to be able to do that um, from the other side of the 50. Really excited about that. You can see our players, and it's okay to be excited. You know, put a lot of work into this, and you know, to go down there and clock it, and you know, they're protecting the sidelines, and you know, we get that thing done, and Bruce spots the ball, and everybody's running and set. You know, so that's an example of positively, and then negatively, if you know, if it's a penalty and it's we're looking in the backfield, um, and it becomes something that's over and over, you know, you have to, you know. Eventually, if there's other players or you're holding all the time or you don't take care of the football, or you're loose with a football, uh, you know, you have to find other options. So I apologize if there's a specific example that you want to talk about. There were a couple, but even like so the Jaguars game, really he had the 20 yard touchdown. And I know you guys were kind of like rotating the coverage a bit. And it, it, I guess there was a miscommunication on that side on that uh, right side of the defense, <coughs> side of the offense. So something like that, like we have a miscommunication or a blown cover. Yeah, I mean, the miscommunication, you know, the accountability is just, you know, on, on each other, you know, to make sure, like, if I'm a player um, that is expecting help, I'm going to remind the guy that's giving me help or, hey, if he goes here, you know, you've got him or – if the, the guard pulls and we have to spill it, um, you know, there's all these just different things and the reaction time that you have uh, is limited. And so again, just the more that you can rep it and coach it and 
again, be as consistent as possible, um, whether that's simple and running the stuff that we've ran so that's not – you know, sometimes you try to scheme up a, a defense or scheme up a play, and it's not against the look that you, you know, maybe at practice because you only have a limited amount of reps. Um, now it's well, the, the margin for error gets greater as opposed to, you know, if you're in this call and they go empty, we know what we're doing. If uh, we get five down uh, this run play, we know how we're handling it because we've, we've done it. So there's a mix of, you know, your, your core concepts and then scheme play. Sunday was, was Sunday one of Skaronsky's cleaner, better games in terms of his overall play? And is he now seemingly back to full strength after the Yeah, I think he's back down? to full strength. I don't know, cleaner, better. Like, you know, him continuing to improve and, you know, show the play strength that we saw on tape. Um, you know, continue to work and, you know, pass protection and games and, you know, but like his play demeanor. How much confidence they get from a performance like they had on Sunday? How much do you think momentum is a real driver for a given player or a unit? Like, what do you like? Well, and we've been through this. Um, I think before you've kind of started covering us, but you know the whole momentum and the confidence thing. I think you can you can have confidence. You know, momentum is something that gets built throughout the week. Uh, preparation. I don't think it necessarily carries over confidence and playing well and, you know, getting off the field. I think that those are things that do. But we've had, you know, this conversation, which is a good one and an interesting one uh, with some of the people that have been here. Uh, but, you know, we have to have great practices for this week and how you play one week doesn't necessarily mean how you're going to play the next. But as a player, I think uh, you, you build some confidence um, from how you do in the game. But I think as a team and, and as a unit, you know, we have to, to build that momentum back up each week. You have to remind yourself of that sometimes too. Yeah. Probably. You got pretty excited on the second fumble. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean I just uh, you know, that was a situation where Arden, you know, we talked so much about working together to um, to create Ball disruption, right? Tip of the ball. Tip balls get picked. Um, first guy in making a tackle, second guy hammering. You know, Arden had an opportunity to, to help Jeff just two plays prior on a, on a conversion, on a third down conversion, maybe one play earlier, two play, whatever it was, a little earlier. And he, uh, you know, he didn't, didn't, didn't execute, right? Didn't, didn't just, didn't quite get it done. And, um, you know, so they're talking through and, you know, hey, let's make sure, you know, whatever. Conversations, and you know, for him to just be able to come back and factor on the edge, and you know, it's a huge play. You know, we we talked about these turnovers and what they can do uh, to the game, to the ball game, and you know, short fields and special teams and all that stuff. So it was just it was fun to see these guys working and, and chasing and, and finally hitting. And I had a good view of it too, so that's probably why. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Until that moment, I guess played the Colts the first time around. You imagine you prepared that way. How much? Did those studies maybe help you going into going into this one? Good, yeah. It was nice to, uh, for the first time, you know, study a team and, and have that kind of come back to you and realize that, think about the things that worked and didn't work and, you know, how we're going to, in turn, respond this time around. So this is the interesting part of the year when you get to play those second divisional games and knowing that we talk about it's always going to be a street fight, you know, that we're coming to play our best ball. We know each other as teams. Uh, so it just makes everything that much more important. This lot where we're they selected, but that was one that you were really projected to go to. Do you remember like some of the meetings and things that you had with the Colts and how that went? Yeah, I thought they went well, and I thought there was definitely a shot that I would be going there. And I think kind of right up until that draft day, like both uh, Anthony and I were kind of like, who is it going to be? Like, we don't we don't know. And um, and it was, uh, like, I, I thought that it was a good chance, but obviously it didn't work out and uh, luckily ended up here. Chance to converse with all the other quarterbacks in your class. What did you think of Anthony Richardson and whatever time you had? Yeah, I mean, I, I played him uh, well once as a starter, and just I mean, very impressed with him. Just what he's able to do with the ball. I mean, he's he's gifted, and obviously he's not playing uh, for the rest of this year. And I would have loved to compete against him, but uh, Gardner is a heck of a quarterback, and I was able to watch him do a lot of great things against us. And um, 
throughout the film that we've been able to see of that of his. But uh, Anthony's a great dude. I mean, I was able to meet his family too when I was uh, down there for the draft, um, and they're great people. And I wish him the best. How's, how's uh, I guess attitude, just uh, mindset been this week coming off a win, knowing six games left, still got a chance to to make it interesting down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, we don't need uh, examples of why we need to, you know, work and have the mindset that, you know, we're still in this. Uh, but, you know, just looking at as early as recently as last year, you know, with the Jags being in a similar spot and the same same uh, record at the same point, making the playoffs. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. So we come in here every day just working to win the next one. And we know if we can just stack some together, then we can make something happen here. So uh, that's encouraging. But regardless of our record, we're going to come and work the same way. Mike was talking about uh, when a play that you've put in recently works, something that that's relatively new to the playbook as opposed to something that's been a staple from the beginning. I know you take whatever works, but when you see something like that come to fruition, is there a little bit of an extra charge about it? Oh, yeah, that's special because, I mean, when you have a game plan specific play that maybe is not as sound as a concept as it might look on paper, but just because of the response that you might be expecting to get and, and they nail it, I mean, I'm, I, I feel awesome. I don't design the plays. I can't imagine what those guys in there, you know, are feeling. So. Uh, that's great, and you know, for every one of those, you know, there might be one that doesn't work, but when they do hit, uh, it's it's a great feeling. Back at that five game, just how translatable is what Ryan did skill set wise to what you do? Do you look at that and see yourself, or is that kind of kind of one for one? Uh, I mean, I I see what he did right and try to try to follow that, you know. Um, but ability wise, uh, I'm, I'm I wouldn't say like I'm trying to copy uh, what he's doing, but more so on a de decision making and. Um, timing wise, like I think he did a good job against them that first game and obviously showed in the stat line, but I think just overall he played a really clean game that game and uh, it, it didn't show up in the score, but hopefully we can play as clean as a game just like that and eliminate the couple of mistakes that happened so that we can come up on top. How much when you're in a situation where, like on Sunday, a lot of times there were four rookies in the huddle, including yourself, and you can go down and, and you do what you guys did at the end of the half and get that field goal with 30 seconds on the clock. How much does that kind of validate, you know, trusting the process and you guys, you know, working together and learning together? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome for like that end of half, the down, down clock situation that we work, you know, uh, the, a lot you know, going back even to training camp and for it to come to a game for us to execute it and then for us to nail the field goal. I mean, that felt awesome going to the locker room and it sucks that we weren't able to kind of carry that over into the second half and keep things rolling. But there's a lot of good things to take, especially from that first half. Um, and when there are four newer guys in the huddle like that, it makes it feel, you know, that much better. Arden has said he really liked how you came in the circle and you broke him down and you told him about dogs and playing like dogs. You know, for you as a younger guy, like where does that comfort level and that confidence come from to be able to, to tell all these veterans what you told them? I think I'm still trying to figure out my leadership style. Like I'm, I'm slowly, I guess, kind of feeling out um, my involvement in that area. But I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to be myself and speaking from the heart and speaking in a way that I feel like could uh, bring others up and uh, try not to be corny and uh, just be authentic. And that's all I can be. So uh, just try to give them a little message and um, hopefully it gets through to some guys. Was there, there a about particular that? point, was there a point where you felt comfortable enough to do that? Or, or is it just been a gradual process? Uh, I think this week, actually, a couple, a couple of teammates like even helped me like pushing me on like hey like hey break us down like get us going like and and to hear that from guys and to know that like they're they're pushing me to be that in that more type of role uh, that helped me a lot but I think it's just a slow process of you know figuring out my style of leadership and being authentic and uh, doing whatever I can to get the guys ready to go out and play. Arden Arden was one of the those guys in the locker room that day, um, but even throughout the week like with breaking down stuff and. Uh, communicating and getting the guys together. Coach Ray made a big emphasis after, you know, team periods to get the whole offense together and run through the tape and, and evaluate it uh, right there on the field uh, for the first time, just to kind of get the corrections uh, and the knee-jerk reactions to the play. And then, you know, we watch it again when we go back. But uh, I think that translated into the game well, and that I was able to communicate a little more comfortably with all the different position groups. Uh, so just gotta keep working on that. Think about any of that stuff ahead of time, like. The night before at the hotel, if I had a chance to talk, this is what I say, or driving, or is it spur, uh, Somet spur of the moment? Sometimes I think I, I, it wasn't spur of the moment that day. Like I think that morning, I, if I knew that if I had the opportunity to come, come and say a message, like I knew what I was going to say. So okay, I had the opportunity to. I was looking to um, 
take that opportunity when it happened, and uh, I'm glad I did did get the opportunity. A guy like DeAndre, just such a veteran in the league. It's his first year here with this team, but I feel like you guys have built that connection from the get go. What did yeah. he talk to you? Yeah, I mean, he's he is just like you know why I love you know Coach Rabe so much is that you know he pushes all of us, and that standard that he holds for us is even higher than the standards that we hold for ourselves, which um, that's what you look for in a coach, and that's the same thing with DeAndre. Like I think. Maybe the first couple of weeks he gave me a little leeway, but now it's like I got to be on my, on my stuff. And um, if if I miss something and I miss him, he'll let me know. And you know I'm I'm gonna do my best to not make it happen the next time or to make it happen the next time. Um, but I, I I love my relationship with him, and, and we're able to speak with each other freely. And I trust what he sees, and we got to make sure that we're on a similar level so that I can get him the ball more. He showed a small social media clip to the defense, this mac and cheese thing. I don't know if you heard. Oh of. yeah. But it was a big hit. Yeah and really hit the theme and was sticky. But I asked him if he ever falls flat on his face, and he said plenty of times he has to say, like, it's okay to laugh, that was meant to be a joke. Yeah. You remember any times where he put something up and got, like, a zero reaction? And <laughs> No, I think Coach does a good job of, of bringing up clips that are uh, relative to what's going on. And that one was, I think someone came up to Thanksgiving dinner making their own mac and cheese, and that didn't fly with uh, with Mama, and she let her know. And so that, that kind of was in relationship to what was going on with us was to not go on and do our own stuff and to play together as a team. And then I kind of took that, and what I, my message to the guys was, sure, like don't do your own thing, but you know, be you, like be that dog you got inside of you. I felt like in the last few weeks we lost that kind of swagger that we had, and, and we got to be walking around the field knowing that we got it. And um, feel like we got some, some of that energy this past Sunday. We got to keep it, keep it going. How much fun is it when there's a, a laugh moment like that that makes the point? Yeah, and it's how, see, it's, it helps you get through the days, you know, and just you need those laughs. And um, Coach Frapes does a good job of, of mixing them in when it's least expected to. You're indoors this week, but have you ever been told that you're like unusually comfortable playing in the cold? I see you out here with no pants, no sleeves. You said you sweat a lot during training camp when you're hot. Is that just like natural for you, cold uh, weather? I just I, I'm more comfortable sleeveless. Like I don't know, like wearing a long sleeve when I'm throwing and stuff. Just uh, doesn't feel the same. But I try to go sleeveless whenever I can. But I think it's a product of where I'm from. Like growing up in the Northeast, like I'm not afraid of the cold. But um, yeah, if it gets below like 20, I might you might see me in a, in a long sleeve. But we'll see. Thank you. Thanks, guys.